as transport engineers, we have quickly come to learn the gravity of the responsibility that falls on these shoulders. You see, transport enables connections, connections between people and other people, people and their jobs, children and schools, you and this TEDx talk. It is the means by which we are able to participate in the buzz of this world. We are drawn to this concept called transport justice, which essentially means that transport should afford everyone fair and equal access to opportunities. Yet we see that people who own cars are still far more advantaged in terms of the opportunities they can access on any given day as compared to someone who has no choice but to use public transport. A couple of months ago, I sat in a workshop with a number of academics in the transport space discussing transport justice and ways to move towards that in South Africa. A young lady presented findings from her mini dissertation detailing the frustrations of four women who use the metro rail, and my heart bled for every single one of them. I realized two things that day. One, I lacked perspective. I had no idea of the extent to which some people could suffer at the shortfalls of our public transport services. And two, we have become so accustomed to consuming information in percentages and graphs that we sometimes forget that they are people, often with heart-wrenching stories, who underpin these figures. So we set out on a quest to give the figures that describe inequality and, sat and user satisfaction in the transport space the nuance we believe they require by starting this initiative called Transport Truths. Transport Truths is an online repository which aims to collect transport stories. Now, we'll still have the figures, but what Transport Truths aims to do is to use these stories to give these figures depth. And even if it's just for a brief moment, it will allow users to walk in the shoes of the people who underpin these stats. Because, after all, isn't it radical empathy that will drive us to a more inclusive world? Ladies and gentlemen, allow us to share a few transport truths with you. After roughly four decades of underinvestment, Prasa has recently invested in new metro rail trains, which are a massive upgrade from the old yellow trains and really a step towards improving the safety and comfort of passenger transport. So why exactly are these new blue trains being vandalized or at high risk of vandalism? So while in conversation with two students here at the University of Pretoria, they both said, people don't want new trains. They just want trains that arrive on time. Now, one of the students now has started to worry that people have started to associate um, reli reliability, which is actually a bare minimum requirement for any public transport service, with the price that you pay for that service. He's noticed that when people start to complain about the trains being late, other users are quick to respond. <laughs> Can you afford the trains that arrive on time? Every morning that I have to claw my way onto that bus, I lose a bit of my dignity. This was captured in conversation with Amon, a University of Pretoria student who uses the Starline bus to travel between Hammanskral and Hatfield every day. These buses are so unreliable that everyone who uses this bus in the morning is forced to push and shove their way onto the first bus they see because no one knows if the next bus is coming. But listen to this. Even in the daily pushing and shoving for a spot on the bus, Amon has found a second family amongst his regular bus users. He says, when a regular bus user passes away, everyone on the bus will make a contribution that will be given to the family of the deceased as a way to pay homage to a fallen companion. Isn't that amazing? And that is the nuance the figures simply don't give us. How about this? Imagine you're getting off a taxi. And as you begin to turn around to close the door, someone has already closed it for you. Before you can even realize that your dress got caught in the door, you're being dragged by that taxi as the driver rushes off to the next stop. This happened to Sarah's mother in 2016 who passed on this year. And despite Sarah being promised compensation for the injuries her mother sustained, until today, she's still waiting. 
And these are just some of the stories we've collected so far. So why does an initiative like Transport Truths matter? Well, firstly, aside from adding depth and color to the numbers, stories matter. People's lived experiences of using transport services, how these experiences change over time and shape people's lives, these stories matter. So the stories on our platform will allow readers to gain valuable perspective and can even challenge their preconceived ideas. Chimamanda Adichie warned us of the danger of a single story, right? Hey, Chimamanda. Hey. <laughs> Secondly, we believe we're filling a knowledge gap. We've come to realize that as transport planners, we're often far removed from the realities of those for whom we plan these public transport services. Here, I'm referring to the realities of people who use Partcore, Starline, Metrorail, minibus taxis, and all the self-made informal public transport modes in townships that are bred in compensation for the shortfalls of our formal public transport system. Where are their voices? Why do we never hear them? To quote Lebo Mashile, where there is silence, there will ultimately be violence. Transport Truths aims to fill these pockets of silence by giving a transformative voice to the often voiceless and potentially a transformative voice to the frustrations that lead to the destruction of our transport infrastructure. Our plan is that in the next five years, Transport Truths will facilitate the transport planning process. Lastly, Transport Truth is not just a platform for stories. It's also a launching pad for great ideas and initiatives, a place that will inspire those who have the means to bring about change, to act. While we were in conversation with some of the members of the Federation of the Urban and Rural Poor, their stories of grievance were laced with such great possibility. Our conversation ended with them feeling encouraged to act, to sit in conversation with taxi operators in their area and pave a way forward that serves the entire community. Great ideas were being flung around about how to transform their taxi rank to a place that is pleasant for them, a place that actually has a functional restroom and not one that looks like this. Seeing the ripple effects of starting this necessary dialogue was so inspirational for us. So, by a show of hands, how many of you drove here today? Okay. How many of you walked or cycled here today? How many of you used public transport to get here? <laughs> how many of you arrived here in a private helicopter? <laughs> a drone <laughs> no no one okay so we're not quite there yet so but the point we're trying to make is that we're all directly affected by tra public transport in one way or the other and by that mere fact we all deserve to have a say about the future of transport in this country now transport truth is not a platform for complaints it's a platform for stories it's a platform where we can create collective transport memory from a user perspective we need to be able to read these stories and say, a person who used Metro Rail 10 years ago felt this way, but that same person using Metro Rail today feels that way. Have we made progress or have we remained stagnant? How do we reach a transport utopia? A utopia where public transport serves everybody equally whether you're in the suburbs of Santon or the extensions of Orange Farm, whether you're able-bodied or living with a disability. A utopia where the service of the Hau train is offered at the price of the metro rail and everyone, rich or poor, can meet on the cushioned seats of our first-class public transport services. How do we get there? Well, we believe it starts with you. Contribute your stories, good or bad. Contribute your ideas, no matter how radical, that will help transport planners pave the way to the just and inclusive future that we envision. We are providing a platform where we can collectively imagine and dare to create this utopia, 
in such a way that all the forces that commandeer the transport planning vehicle cannot help but listen and act accordingly. Thank you. Thank you.